anatomy of the middle ear. The ear is structurally divided into three parts. The outer part, the outer part is made up of the pinna as well as the external auditory canal. The next one is the middle ear. The place where I am standing is called as the middle ear or the tympanic cavity and the final structure of the ear is the inner ear. So like this, the ear is divided into three parts called as outer, middle and the inner ear. So here this video is going to focus especially on the anatomical aspects of the middle ear. So where we are going to discuss about their boundaries, contents as well as the blood supply and the nerve supply of the middle ear. So the middle ear actually extends from the tympanic membrane because tympanic membrane is the lateral structure of the middle ear and it extends towards the inner ear that is lateral structure of the or the lateral wall of the inner ear. So what are the extensions of the middle ear guys? It extends from tympanic membrane laterally as well as to the lateral wall of the inner ear medially. Right? This is where you can see the middle ear cavity which is called as the tympanic cavity. Now coming towards the divisions of the middle ear. The middle ear can be divided into two parts. The first one is called as the tympanic cavity and second one is called as epitympanic recess. So now let us discuss about the tympanic cavity. The tympanic cavity is also called as the tympanum. So here the tympanum is nothing but is a pneumatized region. So what is the meaning of the pneumatized region here? It is nothing but the air filled region of the temporal bone that lies just medial to that of the tympanic membrane. What is the tympanic membrane? We will also call the tympanic membrane as the eardrum. So remember that the tympanic membrane is also called as eardrum. The middle ear is located lateral to that of the promontory. So what is the promontory? The promontory it is nothing but caused by the turns of the cochlea of the inner ear. So now let us talk about the tegment tympani. The tegment tympani is nothing but a laminar projection of the petrous part of the temporal bone that forms the roof of the middle ear cavity is nothing but called as the tegment tympani it is the laminar projection of the petrous part of the temporal bone which forms the roof and it contains especially if you see here the middle ear contains there are three important bones the malleus incus and stapes which transmits the sound vibrations from the tympanic membrane extending towards the inner ear by means of these three important tiny bones which are present in the middle ear. Now let us talk about epitympanic recess which is the another division of the tympanic cavity right. One is the tympanum and second one is called as the epitympanic recess. So this epitympanic recess is nothing but a space which is located superior to that of the tympanic cavity and which lies adjacent to the mastoid air cells and here the ear ossicle such as malleus, incus partially extend upwards into the epitympanic recess. So this is how the middle ear cavity can be divided into the tympanum as well as epitympanic recess. Now we shall discuss about the boundaries of the middle ear. For better understanding the middle ear can be visualized as a rectangular box. So here you can see it looks like a rectangular box which has a roof, which has a floor, which also has the medial wall, this is the medial wall and the lateral wall is open which is formed by the tympanic membrane and also it has the anterior wall and also it has the posterior wall. So like this, the middle ear totally has six walls. So now we have to discuss what are the structures which are formed whenever we are talking about these boundaries of the middle ear. 
First, let us discuss about the roof of the middle ear cavity. The roof is also called as the tegmental wall. Remember that the tegmental wall forms the roof of the middle ear cavity also known as the tympanic cavity. So why we are calling it as a tegmental wall? Because it is formed by the tegment tympani which is nothing but a thin plate of the petrous part of the temporal bone that forms the roof of the canal for the tensor tympani muscle and the tympanic antrum. So this is the wall which means the roof is the one which separates the dura matter which is lying at the floor of the middle cranial fossa from the tympanic cavity and above that what you can see is the cerebral cortex. So after this, after discussing about the roof, now let us discuss about the floor of the middle ear cavity. So as we said that the tegmental wall is called as the roof, the jugular wall is called as the floor. The floor is called as jugular wall. So it is formed by a thin layer of the bone, we can see very clearly here, a thin layer of the bone which separates this particular tympanic cavity from the superior bulb of the internal jugular vein, which means the internal jugular vein as well as the tympanic cavity that is the middle ear cavity is separated by a thin layer of the bone called as jugular wall. So this is the roof as well as floor of the middle ear cavity. And next one is called as the membranous wall. The membranous wall is the lateral wall. So as you can see me inside the middle ear cavity, the lateral wall is opened or formed by the tympanic membrane. So why are we calling it as a membranous wall? Because it is entirely formed by a peaked convexity of the tympanic membrane and superiorly by the lateral bony wall of the epitympanic recess. So the epitympanic recess as well as the tympanic membrane, this is what it actually forms the lateral wall of the middle ear cavity. So after the lateral wall, now we have to see what is the medial wall, right? So this medial wall is called as the labyrinthine wall. So the entire structure, the entire the wall what you are seeing here, which is called as the medial wall. This medial wall is called as the labyrinthine wall. So this is the wall, it separates this particular tympanic cavity from the inner ear. So the initial part, that is the basal turn of the cochlea, forms the promontory of the labyrinthine wall here. And we can also see some of the important structures like round window as well as oval window, right? Promontory, round window, oval window, all these are the structures what we can clearly visualize on the medial wall of the middle ear, right? We can see the oval window as well as round window over here, which communicates with the inner ear. So here we have to discuss a little bit more detail about the round window as well as the oval window. So first let us discuss about the round window here. We can see the structure, right? So round window is one of the two openings which are seen on the medial wall of the middle ear. That is, it is nothing but a part which is separating the middle ear to the inner ear. And this wall and this particular structure is sealed by a secondary tympanic membrane which is also called as round window membrane. So this is the membrane which actually vibrates with opposite phase vibrations entering the inner ear through the oval window. And this particular structure allows the fluid into the cochlea to move which in turn it ensures the hair cells of the basilar membrane will be stimulated and the audition will occur. That is the importance of the round window. And next structure is called as the oval window. Oval window is also called as fenestra vestibuli. So the oval window is also a membrane covered opening that leads the middle ear to the vestibule of the inner ear over here. So the vibrations that contact the tympanic membrane travel through the ossicles and it enters into the inner ear. And the oval window 
is nothing but called as an intersection of the middle ear with the inner ear and it is directly contacted by the stapes because it is covered by the food plate of the stapes. So this is what we need to know about uh, the round window as well as the oval window. So after discussing about the medial wall, next let us concentrate on the posterior wall of the tympanic cavity. The mastoid wall is also called as the posterior wall of the middle ear. So this is the wall which features the adutus, which is the opening to the mastoid antrum in its superior part, which connects to the tympanic cavity, especially to the mastoid air cells. And also we can appreciate the canal of the facial nerve, which descends between the posterior wall and the antrum medial to that of adutus. So above this particular canal, what we can see is the lateral semicircular canal and below the aditus there is a hollow conical projection called as a pyramid which is perforated by the tendon of the stapedius muscle. So these are the structures what we can identify on the posterior wall of the middle ear cavity. At last we have to discuss about the anterior wall of the middle ear cavity which is also called as the carotid wall. So this is the wall that separates the tympanic cavity from the carotid canal. So what is the carotid canal here? The carotid canal is a passageway in the temporal bone through which the internal carotid artery enters the middle cranial fossa from the neck. So this anterior wall is also termed as the carotid wall because there is a thin plate of the bone that separates the carotid canal from the tympanic cavity and this particular wall is perforated by the tympanic branch of the internal carotid artery and also the deep petrosal nerve. So this is what we need to discuss about uh, the anterior wall of the middle ear cavity. By this we completed all the six boundaries of the middle ear cavity which is also known as the tympanic cavity. After discussing all the boundaries of the middle ear, let's enumerate the functions of the middle ear cavity. The primary function of the middle ear is to offset the decrease in the acoustic energy that would occur if the low impedance ear canal air directly contacted the high impedance cochlear fluid. So when the sound waves are transferred from low impedance medium that is air to the high impedance medium example that is water, a considerable amount of energy is reflected and fails to enter the liquid. So if there is no middle ear where present, only 0.1% of the acoustic wave energy traveled through the air would enter the fluid of the cochlea and 99.9% .9 would be reflected. So that is the chief function of the middle ear cavity. And the middle ear also able to dampen the sound conduction substantially when faced with a very loud sound by noise induced reflex contraction of the middle ear muscles. So these are the two important functions what we need to know about the middle ear. So by this we completed the anatomy of the middle ear.